Hi folks, so I'm back and this is the conclusion of the video on repairing the Tektronix 453 scope. Um, it turned out to have a bad bridge rectifier and a low voltage power supply. So we had no negative 8 volts, therefore we had no display. Now I originally wrongly believed that the problem with the high voltage multiplier because the voltage was very low. However, it has always been my experience in the past that whenever these fail, that it is due to them completely shorting out, usually pulling down the uh, lower of the high voltage supplies, the one that feeds into the high voltage multiplier. So the multiplier was not the issue. It was the fact that we had no negative 8 voltage, which I believe feeds the blanking. I haven't looked into it. But <clears throat> replacing the bridge rectifier cleared the problem. And in order to get to it, I was thinking I had to pull the circuit board, and we're going to look at that, and you'll see why that's such a nightmare scenario. But as usual, um, subscriber Mark Zacharias gave me a valuable tip. He said, yeah, just twist them until they snap off and pull the leads out. And I did what he said, and it was far easier. Uh, there's a real risk of causing damage to the circuit board if you try to remove it. And again, we're going to take a look at that in a moment. Um, but a little aside here, I pulled this t-shirt out of the closet because I was uh, talking with a kid that um, works in a nearby coffee shop near where I work. <coughs> and um, sharp kid, very, very smart well-educated, but I asked him how old he was, and when he told me, I laughed and said, yeah, I, I got t-shirts older than you are. This particular one is probably old enough to be his mother, so I just thought I'd pull it out as a, as a little joke, something to give me a chuckle anyway. So let's take a look at this scope. I'll show you what I did, and I'll show you how everything now works. So incidentally, they're having a cleanup initiative where I work, and I'm finding all kinds of old stuff. And you can see why they're having an initiative, because, wow, um, the date on this is January slash February 1974. Um, not a lot of stuff gets thrown out where I work. And the interesting thing about this particular Tektronix um, newsletter is if you look toward the back here, they have an article on servicing the 465 portable oscilloscope. Nothing in there that would have helped us out, but I just kind of found it kind of interesting that I found this while working on this particular piece. Um, some pretty interesting old stuff, and it points out that even back in the, in the 70s, they were pretty good at making this stuff. Um, it's a... It's a marvel of engineering. All, all the equipment Tektronix made back in the day. Uh, the only thing was uh, Hewlett Packard made better spectrum analyzers, analog spectrum analyzers. Everybody who's deep in the test equipment of that era acknowledges this. Even HP did. Um, but anyway, I just thought this was interesting. I found a few of these and I took them home because <laughs> I mean, they were just going to be thrown out anyway. All right, so you see this board would be very difficult to get at, gain access to. Fortunately, um, most of the transistors here are socketed and any other components are easily gotten to. But I wasn't sure what to do with these bridge rectifiers. And Mark, thank you so much. Mark's been really invaluable to this channel. He points out things that I fail to see. Um, he gives me valuable hints, and uh, although he says he no longer makes videos, he does have some videos on YouTube that are well worth looking at, so by all means, check them out. Um, but yeah, he was right. I just twisted this until it snapped off, and I soldered a new bridge rectifier in, and that was the problem. Once I did that, I got my negative 8 volts back, and we got our display back. So let's take a look at the front panel. I'll show you how it's working. Okay, so we're looking at an input in channel 2 here, and you can see we have a nice, stable, clear display, and the attenuator looks good on channel 2. However, if we go to channel 1, and we look here, you can see that's way different than what we had on channel 2. 
Now I should be able to feed a signal into both so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, these scopes have little plug-ins that go inside the attenuators and uh, one of them just needs to be cleaned. Uh, I used to just rock these in their sockets, maybe put a little cleaning compound in. But if we, uh, if we alternate between the two channels, you can see our display looks very close in amplitude at 0.5 volts. Um, but if I go to 0.2 on channel 2, that looks good. But here, you can see the difference in amplitude. And uh, basically, just have to clean the attenuator. So I'm going to pull this out of the case. It's just slipped in so, it'll, so I can use the tilt bail and stand it up. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. This is a real simple procedure, and it's fairly common due to the age of these scopes. Okay, so with the cover off, you can see this is our channel one, channel two attenuator assemblies. Um, this is the one we're gonna get into. You have to pull these screws out here. And underneath are these little plastic guys about yay wide that will uh, that plug in. And we're just gonna unplug them, put a little contact cleaner in, rock them in the sockets, put it back together. And that's usually all it takes. So I'm going to take the cover off and let you see what that looks like. Okay, so I've got all the screws out and the cover comes off like this. And these are the attenuators I'm talking about. They just sit in here. So we're going to stick a little contact cleaner down in there. I'm going to just dribble a little, uh, little of this stuff in here. And then we'll push it back in, rock them a little bit, and that's usually all it takes. So let's see, grab a pair of hemostats so we can get this out. Okay, and you can see there are just pins in here. So we are going to just a little bit, watch me just douse this. Okay, yeah, that's all I want is just a little. You don't need a lot. Okay. Well, you know what? I just realized there are six and I only did four. Okay. By the way, if you can see down in here, I'm not sure if you can, but there are these little gold fingers that the cams move. And they just lift up and they tend to slide and they're gold plated. So there's usually not a problem with corrosion or problems like that. So let's see if I can get this in without bending these pins. I have to put the visor on. It's a drag getting old when you can't see anymore. All right, nope, we got that in. Now I usually rock it a little bit just to clean any corrosion that might be on the legs. It doesn't take much. It's just that these pins have been sitting in there for probably 50 years without being disturbed, and sometimes they just get to be a little, uh, a little nasty. So we clean them up, and this is usually all it takes. Come on. Yeah, there we go. Just a little bit. Okay, that's probably enough to do it, so I'm going to plug it in. We're going to take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to slide it back. Oh, no, I'm not going to slide it back in the case. I'm just going to move this so we can see it and see if that did the trick. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a display back on here, and I'm at uh, 0.5 volts peak to peak on my display. And now when we move it, you see it looks a lot more, more correct, more linear, uh, however you want to refer to it. 
but we don't have that huge jump that we had going between 0.5 and 0.2. This is correct. So that's, that's usually all it ever is on these. Uh, I've worked on a fair amount of them. I'm a little embarrassed to get caught out on a low voltage power supply like that. But um, the high voltage readings threw me off. And incidentally, one of the problems taking a high voltage reading on this is in order to get down into the connector, it's about roughly that deep. And the tip of this probe is only that long. So it doesn't quite make it on there. I tried to extend it, but I was getting unrepeatable results anywhere between five and 12 kilovolt. I didn't get the 12 until later on when I started playing with it. But I think the real point to take away from this is I've never seen one do anything but short. And I believe that's their most common failure mode. I've never seen one that just put out low voltage. So uh, I still haven't to this day. If you are getting any kind of high voltage out of your multiplier, it's probably good. You need to look elsewhere. Once I did that, it didn't take too long to find the problem. The power supply is always the best place to start whenever you have anything like that. So anyhow, I believe everything else is working on here. I'm not going to continue this video. Um, everything I would use this for appears to be working. Triggering is good. Both channels work. And we're going to stop this right here. So um, I certainly hope you folks learned something from this because I certainly learned from something from this. And uh, again, I want to thank Mark. That was a great tip. Saved me a lot of heartache and a lot of work. Um, and as always, I like giving back to the community that's given me so much. Thanks a lot, folks, and have a great day.